Hi there, friends. It's Miss Tiffany from the Butler Area Public Library, and I'm here with another video talking about resources for you to do your own story times at home. Today's video is going to talk about what I consider to be one of the most important things about story time, and that is, of course, the stories that we read. You may have received one of our story time at home kits, and if so, you will notice that there were two books included in the kit. There was Monster Faces and The Monsters on the Bus. So we are definitely going to be talking about these two books today, but we're also going to talk about some other types of books and what makes a good story time book. Before we get started, I would like to say that choosing books to read for story time really is a very personal choice. So the things I'm going to talk about today are just general suggestions. Keep in mind that you know the children in your life better than anyone else. So you are going to know what books will be good for those children. I'm simply here to give you some suggestions, not only on books, but on different ways to use the books you may already be using. Yes, that's right. There's more than one way to use a book in story time. And these are all things that we're going to talk about today. So the first type of book I'd like to talk about is the board book. And the Monster Faces is a great example of a board book. Board books are a type of book that is really good for our youngest children. Um, they're usually smaller and sturdier. As you can see, this one only has a few pages, but they're very, very thick. And this allows a small child an infant um, up to like two years old to be able to touch and interact with a book physically without doing damage to it. Believe it or not, just being able to touch a book is a very important part of literacy for a baby. We always wanna make sure that the child is having a positive interaction with a book. And while it is certainly perfectly fine to use traditional paper page books when reading to a baby, I also encourage you to incorporate the board book because this is a book that a child can interact with without being redirected because the pages might get ripped. Something you'll notice about board books is that they are traditionally very colorful because we want to catch the child's attention visually. And they often don't have a lot of words on each page, maybe just one, two, maybe up to five. Um, and they are very concrete ideas because this is the very foundation of vocabulary and literacy skills. So it's going to be very concrete. As you can imagine, a book called Monster Faces talks about different faces that a monster might have and the feelings associated with it. So we see that the scary face looks scary, the hungry face looks hungry, the mad face looks mad. So not only is a book like Monster Faces going to help a child with literacy skills, we're also teaching some social emotional skills as well. One of the things we have on hand here at the library are board book versions of traditional picture books, especially traditional picture books that we may have grown up with. So here is a board book version of The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carle. And you can see that it's going to tell the same story as our traditional picture book would. It's just in a format that is a little bit sturdier and easier for use with smaller children. As toddlers start to get a little bit older and closer to the preschool age, you can still use board books. There are board books with a few more words per page. And again, this is an example of a book that's not only going to help with literacy skills, but also social emotional skills as well. There are tons of different types of board books here. We have some that are silly. We have some that are serious. We have some that work on rhyming sounds or phonic sounds. We have some that work on counting. Some, we have some that work on introductory words, things like baby's first 100 words. So board books are a great place to start with the youngest children in your family. Another type of book that you will most likely use during story time is a picture book. Now, there are tons of different levels of picture books and styles of picture books. We're going to cover a few of them now. 
The other book in the Storytime Home Kit is The Monsters on the Bus. And this is a book that follows the song patterns of the wheels on the bus, but it has slightly different words. So one of the things that you can do with this book is you can either read it straight through as a storybook, or you can actually sing this book to and with your child. You'll notice that this book has more words per page than what the board books had. Now for this particular book, because it is a song structure that the child is probably already familiar with, it's not as daunting to have so many words per page. But if this were just a regular storybook, I probably would not use this with just a beginning preschooler because it is a lot of words on the page and it can be a little bit difficult to keep their attention. So if we're in the three to four range, maybe not so many words per page. We might be looking at something more like this book. This is Bounce by Doreen Cronin. And it is a picture book, so you can see that it is a bigger size than the board books, but it is a beginning picture book in that there are not very many words per page. So this would be great for a child who is starting to transition out of those toddler years and into the preschool years. This book particularly has silly words in it, which is a great tool to use for children because they like the sound of those silly words. It also gets them working on some of the letter sounds. So if you're saying words like kerplunk or plop, then they're going to be hearing some of those letter sounds in a very defined way. The next example of a picture book I would like to share is a book that's probably more appropriate for older preschoolers as they are approaching kindergarten age. And this is Grumpy Monkey. And it is by Suzanne Lang. And you will see that in Grumpy Monkey, there are definitely more words per page than the books that we had previously discussed. This book is better for children who are used to sitting for a little bit longer, but it also has very silly themes in it to keep the child engaged and again, bright, vibrant pictures. Another example of a good picture book for older preschoolers is Unicorn Day. And this is by Diana Murray. One of the things I like best about Unicorn Day is it is told in rhyme. So again, children are going to hear those letter sounds and repeating letter sounds really do help children with their literacy skills. So books that are in a rhyming format can really help with that. Again, you can see there are very vibrant pictures. Again, a little silly to help keep the children engaged. Picture books aren't just for toddlers and preschoolers, however. In fact, a lot of studies show that picture books can be useful in terms of literacy for children well into elementary school. One of my favorite picture books that I like to use with school-age children, and it's pretty much my favorite picture book in general, is a book called Dragons Love Tacos by Adam Rubin. And I use this book a lot as a read aloud for kindergartners and first graders when I get to visit in classrooms. Again, definitely more words per page, great vibrant pictures. And one of the things I like best about this book is it's a little bit interactive. So it definitely sort of breaks the fourth wall between the book and the reader and lets you be a little bit more interactive with the kids that you're reading it to. Now I'd like to talk about some really unique picture books. And the first one is a picture book with absolutely no pictures in it. In fact, it's called The Book With No Pictures by B.J. Novak. And true to its name, there are no pictures in this book. It is simply words on pages. However, the pages aren't just type. When the book starts out, you can see it is just some type on the pages, not a ton of words per page. But as you continue on in the book, things get a little bit more interesting. So there is some use of color. 
there's some different fonts, and a lot of the words are very silly. The idea behind this book is that the person reading it has no control over what they're saying because they have to say whatever the book says. In the end, it means the reader is saying lots of silly things and making funny noises, and children love that. So don't be afraid of the number of words on a page or if there are no pictures because the book with no pictures is a great example of a picture book that focuses on words, but in a really innovative way. That was an example of a picture book with no pictures. And now I would like to give you an example of a picture book with no words. Yes, that's right. We have plenty of picture books here at the library that actually have no words in them at all. So you can see that this book is simply illustrations. And sometimes the illustrations have a moving component, but there are no words in this book. And I really love to recommend books with no words in them for children who are reluctant readers, who maybe don't like to sit for story time, Maybe they aren't engaged by traditional picture books. What you can do with a wordless storybook is actually tell the story yourself or encourage the child to tell the story with you. This is a really great type of book to use for children who don't have independent literacy skills just yet, but they really want to feel like they're the ones telling the story. So they can tell the story because there's no words to read. They simply tell the story by gathering information from the pictures and making it up as they go. One of the things I like best about picture books that don't have any words is it makes us, as the adult, think about using books in different ways. Because there are different ways to use a book, and there are so many different kinds of books, of course there's going to be different ways to use them. We've already talked about books that have a familiar song format, like the monsters on the bus, so sometimes books are used for singing. And we've talked about books that children can handle by themselves or they can make up the story themselves. I'm sure some of you have books that are well loved in your household that you read every single day and the children probably have them memorized. But one of the ways that you can use those books that you know by heart in a different way is to have the child tell the story, not just by memorizing the words, but by looking at the pictures and telling the story to you. This helps a child work on their vocabulary and their sentence structure without even realizing that they are doing literacy activities. You can also use the books and the pictures in a way that has nothing to do with the story. You can point out things about color. You can use them to count images on the page. There are tons of ways that you can use both new picture books and board books to your family and some of your old favorites. Again, these are just suggested types of books and ways that you can use books in your story times at home. But like I said at the beginning of the video, children are all different and you know the children in your life better than I do. So you're going to know what's going to work for them and what won't. If you ever need help, selecting titles for your own story time, please feel free to reach out to me here at the library. I'm happy to help. One of the things I can do is pull a bundle of books, whether it's based on a specific topic or a few topics or different skill levels. We can place them on hold for you and you can pick them up at your convenience. So please keep that in mind as you are planning your own at-home story times. I hope you have found these suggestions helpful and until next time, happy reading!